My talk is going to suggest to, do, to you what to do next time you meet a person like Ramiro, or Jesper, or Therese, or Jonas, Karin, or John. These six persons are friends of mine. I've known most of them for many years. But only in the last two years I've been extremely interested in their academic field. These six people are all biologists. As you can see, it might be difficult to, uh, to differ a biologist from someone else. They look pretty much like us. Maybe you know one. Maybe there are biologists in this room right now. Uh, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> but I'm an engineer, and what I didn't know until two years ago is that a biologist or someone who knows uh, about the way nature works very likely have important and interesting input on, for example, how to make a low-weight container or how to make a vehicle for heavy terrain or maybe even how to make your company more resilient. And this is why I choose to call this talk How to Use a Biologist. Um, what I got in introduced to two years ago is uh, biomimicry, which is the idea of sustainable development with nature as model, measure and mentor. It was described uh, in a book by a wonderful woman in America called Janine Benyus. And uh, there are countless of examples already throughout the whole history, from nanomaterials to big cities being built right now, where we're really trying to make them work as an ecosystem. And what I got interested in is what makes these ideas appear? What makes a biologist that studies termites collaborate with an architect on how to create indoor climate control in a building? And how can um, a photosynthesis uh, researcher gain from uh, the work of a solar cell developer? and vice versa. And how do we get ideas such as putting the same surface structure that reduces drag uh, of uh, swimming sharks and taking that structure and put it on swimsuits or on boats? My first real experience with biomimicry was here in Costa Rica at La Cusinga Lodge on a biomimicry and design workshop arranged by Biomimicry Guild, which is uh, this lady, Janine Benyus, consultancy company. And on this workshop, we were engineers, designers, um, business people, all working in this fantastic rainforest together with biologists like Chris, to the far right in the picture. And uh, there were people from, for example, uh, company that makes uh, bathroom interior, really studying how water is distributed in the rainforest. And there were people that build airplanes that were really looking into how noise is managed in nature. And after this, I will never look at nature in the same way again. <laughs> there are so many solutions there, and in fact, all the things that we want to do, like transport things, how will housings, beautiful forms, colors, materials, activity, everything that we wish to do exists in the ecosystems. And it's actually without petroleum, without poisoning the system, and it's all beautifully balanced and that's what I think is so interesting, and that's why I really think it's time to invite the biologists to the innovation arena. 
I wasn't alone, uh, <laughs> I wasn't the only Swede on this workshop. The other one is a designer called Mats, he's the one with the binoculars in the front of the picture. He also changed <laughs> after this, actually. What he's doing ri right now is that he's preparing for his own permaculture beer brewer. He, he's making uh, a farm uh, which works as a permaculture, and for you who don't know, that means an edible ecosystem that works from itself, that you can just harvest from, but it works for itself. So after I came home from Costa Rica, I had a wonderful opportunity to explore biomimicry in a lot of different ways. I have put... Uh, business people and architects together, biologists and uh, design offices, environmental uh, organizations and uh, engineers. And what happens when we bring in nature is really cool. Uh, the ideas are, are new, most often, uh, they're, they're different. Uh, they are more well adapted and they are more likely to be sustainable. Of course, there are some uh, obstacles. Uh, I have been thinking and working a lot on to figure out what it takes if we want to do this. And what I found out is two things. Uh, the first thing is that we need a common platform and language. Because if you are an engineer and you want to make a washing machine, you cannot call a biologist and say, Hi, hey, hey, how would nature make a washing machine? <laughs> there will be no answers. So you will ha have to find a common platform, which is uh, most of the time a way to find functions that are common in nature and in human needs. So you can, you can actually phone a biologist and ask him if he knows how to make sure make surfaces clean or even how surfaces in nature avoid getting dirty from the very first beginning. And the other thing is that we need to make these people meet. So that's what I've been trying. This is my favorite <laughs> workshop I've done. It's not only cross-disciplinary with biologists and uh, engineers and designers, it's also Cross generation. <laughs> uh, I put grown up working people together with uh, mid school students, and suddenly the idea of pu putting cockroach legs on a vehicle for elderly wasn't such an unthinkable idea any longer. Lena Tennyson, who took this picture, is uh, the biologist I worked most with during those two years. And we would really like to encourage you to invite a biologist to your next brainstorming session. Because otherwise, we will never know what happens when we put the research team together with biologists at a fire in the deep forest in November in uh, Hysna uh, in Sweden, and start to discuss moist and noise management. So next time you meet someone like Ramiro, be sure you have your questions prepared. Thank you.